Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Pastor Davis and uh, about to jump on for uh, Bible study real quick. So just uh, let me know that you're in here so we can say hello. Sister Bernice Harris, good to see you. Saw you earlier today. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I should have downloaded the pictures and been able to stream it to you all. But we've had some wonderful people come through today and help us uh, do some spring cleaning at the church. And uh, I am so appreciative of them. And everybody who has uh, come out to beautify our church and to um, make room for the new growth that God wants to do with us and for us. And so uh, I'm very highly appreciative of those. And, and and the week's not over with, guys. We're just really getting started. All right. I believe uh, that we're just really getting started. The dumpster came yesterday and we are uh, we filled it up some today. We're going to have to probably haul that off and and then. Um, probably get another one out here. So uh, we're getting some stuff uh, together and uh, and we're learning a lot as we're doing it. So it's wonderful. But regardless of it, we're just thanking God for those volunteers that it came out in for the ability to have the capacity to clean our church because a church oftentimes is a reflection of um, how we honor the kingdom of God. So we want to make sure that we, uh, we, we do that. All right. So here we go. I see everybody coming on. I see... Uh, Dr. Betty Crockett, I see the Johnsons that are on. Many blessings up for the Johnson family. They'll be traveling soon. I ain't going to tell all the business, but I know y'all know where they go. And I want to say um, uh, shout out to Sister Johnson, uh, Sister Beverly Johnson. A lot of you all know that she is a big contributor to the MS Walk, National Walk, um, for, for research and new discovery with uh, MS. And um, I think for the past couple of years, I read the, the letter right. She has been the highest um, or the most contributing every year. And so we want to thank God for the work she's doing with that. Um, and, you know, it's not attached to a church or anything like that, but she's attached to our church. And so we want to celebrate that. So good job to you, uh, Sister Beverly Johnson, for everything that you're doing as it relates to the MS uh, and uh, in research for it. It is vitally important. And uh, we want to make sure that we honor that uh, honor that work. So I see some more, Sister Joyce, some more you're on. And and uh, Geraldine Barnes, I see you on as well. And so it's like I said, it's good to have everybody kind of present with us and, and doing some things. A couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, the first thing I would like to say to you is um, Sister Circle. All right. I want to make sure I get that announcement together. Sister Circle. Uh, we... Um, we thank God that y'all are about to start circling up all the sisters, right? And so I know that uh, Dr. Crockett uh, came on and gave us a uh, gave us a uh, message this past Sunday about it. And so the information is forthcoming about the Zoom link and things such as that. We'll have it ready for you. And uh, I'm encouraging every woman to be present um, and to um, be there. And let's celebrate and let's do some things. It's called Welcome Home. I believe that's the the uh, the uh, name of it. And so we want to make sure that you're welcome home at your church, which is Martin Temple, the Temple Experience. We need you here. All right. And so if you would, please make sure that you're here for that. And we would definitely, uh, definitely be thanking God uh, for it. OK. Uh, also, um, the other announcement that we have is, oh, I, I was supposed to say this and I didn't say it. Uh, but this weekend on Saturday, I will officially be getting hooded for my doctoral work at Louisville Presbyterian Seminary. Pray for your pastor as I journey to Kentucky uh, to get that done. And there's another announcement that I'm forgetting to announce. Charge to my head, nut to my heart. Oh, I want to say thank you so much for a wonderful dis district conference for those who attended in person or if you attended uh, online. Uh, we had a wonderful district conference. Uh, I know many of you all were on when we were talking about serving the flock. I had a good time teaching, preaching, whatever you want to call it. And uh, and then Elder gave a soul stirring address. And I want to thank um, Sister. Uh, hello, Sister Evans. I see you, Sister Paulisa. Um, also, I want to thank Sister Bernice Harris because she was our delegate and did give a very fine report. But the report, you couldn't hear it because of. Um, the technology that we had at the, uh, the place we were hosting it. However, uh, I will make sure that uh, if we don't get a copy out to everybody, that we'll at least say it during morning worship and morning service. Again, also, there's another announcement. If you have not, please turn in um, your graduations to uh, Sister Vivian Edwards, uh, Dr. Neil Stokes, 
Um, those and there's one other person you can contact, and I forgot that name. Please forgive me. Uh, but if you would turn those in, I think it's Angela. I believe I'm not sure, but please forgive me for that and not knowing the third person name. But if you would turn those in so that we can have a wonderful graduation day, we would highly appreciate it. Y'all ready to get into this Bible study? I know I am, and uh, I do have a PowerPoint for you today. Um, I've been around the church helping clean up, so I had to kind of throw it together. So again, I tell people all the time, I am a music major. I'm not an English major, so if you see something wrong, just say, oh, Pastor, you need time. <laughs> so so we want to make sure uh, that we're doing that. But get to Jonah chapter 3 for me, and that's where we're going to rest, all right? Jonah chapter 3, we've been in Jonah uh, preaching. Oh, man, we had a great time last Sunday when God changes his mind. I was blessed by that word. I was even so more blessed that this young man, 19 years old, gave his life to uh, Christ and joined the church. Hey, Amen. Isn't that wonderful? That's good news. I don't care what you say. That is great news right there for this young man to come give his life to Christ right here at Martin Temple. Amen. And so we want to make sure that we uh, love on that young man and, and, and definitely encourage him. So um, let's look to the Lord and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time to be here. God, we ask, Lord, that you would be with our gathering, although it's virtual, Lord, be with us. Um, God, that we might learn exactly what you would have for us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray that all God's children say amen. All right, everybody, look here. Jonah chapter three. Jonah chapter three. We begin to talk about a few things in Jonah chapter three. Uh, what we discovered last this, this past Sunday is that God gives second chances. God changes his mind. God can do what God wants to do. What we also learned in this is that God is very, very determined to get a message to the people in Nineveh. And I, and I kept saying the saying on Sunday, I'm going to make a sermon out of this. What's in Nineveh that's so important? What is in Nineveh? I know it's a great city, over 120,000 in population. And at this time, that's a big population, heavy in resources and all those things are wonderful. But what's so important? What's so, thank you, Sister Joyce Tate. What's so, and Sister Jody Barnes, thank you so much. And Dr. Crockett, what is so important? All right. What is so important about Nineveh that God would um, turn a whole prophet around, swallow him up in a big fish, carry him, bomb him in on land, and then tell him, go say this. Right. And so the good news in that is that when God wants to get a message to you, uh, he will turn earth around to speak to you. You, you hear what I'm saying? Like God will do this. Um, God does. Hey, Sister Sue Watson, how you doing? Um, so God, God will do that. And God does this in this chapter. He does it in Jonah chapter three. And we have to understand that God's pursuit or God's determination to speak to the people of Nineveh, at Nineveh does not necessarily start in chapter three. However, it really starts in chapter one when he tells Jonah to go speak to them. It is persistent in chapter two when he swallows him up. Well, at the end of chapter one, where he swallows him up, and then Jonah tells his testimony in chapter two, but God's determination is still in chapter two because he vomits Jonah up on dry land. He makes his way, uh, journeys to Nineveh because God has given him another chance to speak to these people. What's so important about Nineveh? That was my big question. Well, the truth of the matter is... Uh, uh, what's really important about you, what's really important about you is that God will seek ways to always get his word to us. You know, God will always seek ways and find ways to talk with us and to ensure that we are doing what God needs for us to do. Because when you are valuable to God, God is determined. God is determined. OK, so, hey, Sister LaFay, I see you on there. All right. So uh, so we talked about that. But let's get into this. Um, there was a few things that happened. Um, and, and that's really what I want to kind of rest with today. There was a few things that happened. And I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. There's another way to do this. There's another way to do this. And. We're going to do it in a minute. <laughs> OK. Oh, Chrome tabs, I'm doing tabs. No, we're not doing tabs. We're not doing the entire screen. We're just doing this one right here. All right. All right, we're going to get it in a few. <laughs> we're going to get it in a few. All right, so maybe it's share slides. Is it share slides? Maybe that's what it is. I got to get it together. Don't worry about it. We'll get it. Anyway, so here we are. Hey, Dr. Connie Lowe, I see you on here. How are you doing? How are you? 
It is good to see you on here. Amen. I think this is it. Here we go. Let's see if we can share it in here. Oh, that's what this is. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyway, we'll fix it later. So here it is. So we are at the point where Jonah is um, trying to ensure um, that he takes advantage of the second chance. And what we talk about with the second chance is in the middle of their prayer, look at this. This is what they say. And y'all want y'all to get your word and get with me uh, with this. When Jonah chapter three, and then let's look at uh, verse six, right? Jonah chapter three, verse six. And he does something that is so intricate in this right here. In Jonah chapter three, as it's telling the story, he begins to talk about how, um, uh, what they did. Not necessarily um, that God changes his mind. Now, we're not there yet, but look at what they do in order to get to verse 10. They start right here, verse 6. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself in sackcloth and satin ashes, and he issued a proclamation and published it through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his and his nobles, let neither man nor beast nor flock nor herd taste anything. Let them not feed or drink. Let the man and the beast be covered with sackcloth. And let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from the fierce anger so that they may not perish. All right. So we're going to just read that right there. That's that's where we want to stick that at. Look at look at what they do. They are doing some they're, they're doing something here that um, they gets God attention all right they're they're doing something that gets god's attention and um and this is and this is amazing what they do is they begin to set the trajectory of changing god's mind they did not settle for just the destruction is coming they said listen uh uh dr stokes and uh and cynthia revel young this is what he said the king said i'm no dummy he says, I fear the Lord. I, I know him, you know, might not have been doing everything right, but I know God. So listen, this is what we need to do. I need to come off the throne. I need to uh, sit in sackcloth and ashes. We're going to pray and fast. Everybody's a village and we're going to get God's attention. I wonder what it would look like if the church could follow this mindset and we need to do what it takes to get God's attention. They didn't do it just as a king. They did it as Nineveh, a nation. They did it as a as a, as, as a great city. All right. This is what they did. But they did something. They did something called repent. All right. And I want to talk about this word repent because so many times or uh, sometimes I don't think we really understand what this word means. Uh, do we really understand what the word to repent means? What does it mean to be repentant? What does it mean to have a repentant heart? Um, uh, and so I and so I really want to talk about that with you all today. What does it mean to be repentant? All right. So um, so when we talk about when we talk about repentance, we have to understand exactly what it is. Repentance in its truest form. And I want you to catch this. Repentance in its truest form is to turn or to return. All right. It's just it's just not to turn and, and go the other way. Sometimes we're very um, sometimes we have a shallow look at what um, at what at what repentance is. Repentance is just not I'm not going to do it anymore. It is a turn, but it's also a return to uh, return to what? What might that be? Um, well, listen, not only that, it's a turning from evil, a turning from wickedness. It's a turning from sin. Turning away from sin, turning away from wickedness, turning away from evil. And it's a return to God. Do you see how that's working? It's a turning away and a returning to God, getting back where God would desire me to be. Um, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If if my people who are called by my what my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. That's what repentance is. David is so masterful at repentance. 
David is 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 wonderful at it. Um, a lot of times um, when we talk about repentance, we think if I just don't touch it anymore, or if I just don't do it anymore, or if, I, if this just doesn't happen. No, but in New Testament, repentance is really a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of spirit. It's sitting remorsefully with what I've done and make it a conscious decision, just not with my actions, because it's not going to start with that first. But if any, but but listen, we we have to understand that. Um, it, we, we have to understand that uh, first turnaround start within our mind. Be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. If you just try to transform it by saying, I'm not going to do something, but your mind is not transformed. We know that we can fall short of the glory of God by thought, word, and by deeds. So when so when we're repenting, we're making a, a heartfelt, conscious decision that I'm turning away from that and I'm turning back towards God. All right. And when we talk about repentance, we just we, we just can't sit here and, and talk about anything when it comes to repentance. We have to understand why talking about repentance is so vital. Right. Because at the end of because at the end of the day, what, it, what, what we're really talking about is our sinful ways, our wicked ways. Our transgressions, forgive those who transgress against us, at least forgive those who uh, forgive uh, forgive us our, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's another word form for sin. We have to understand what sin is. I think that I've had a conversation with someone and we were talking about sin, and uh, and and it didn't get into a heated debate, but I think we had two versions of sin. Right. I think that a lot of times we think about sin was don't do this. Don't do this. You ain't do this. You did this. And when you do this, you see it, you see it. And I said, man, y'all make it so hard for people to live righteous. Right. I love Dr. Otis McMillan, how he says, he says, you will know how saved you are by how much sin you're willing not to commit anymore. Right. And so when we talk about sin, sin in its in its in its purest form because sin in, in my research will really tell you that sin is not necessarily a biblical word although it's used in biblical times right when we talk about sin in its purest essence it means to error it means to fall short of the goal sin means failure D david even talks about god i've sinned against you right i failed i error i didn't hit the mark as i was supposed to Right. And some of that poeticism is also put into the New Testament uh, uh, as far as press for the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. All right. And so that is a that is um, uh, another one which says press for the mark. That is I'm trying to reach the goal. I'm trying not to sin. Y'all with me. All right. So so I think a lot of times we have to understand what sin is. It means to fall short. Um, uh, we, okay, let's talk about it. The original sin or fall of man. Uh, we, we believe that to be in Genesis, uh, where Adam, um, failed to do what God, he missed the mark. He sinned against God. He failed. He was disobedient. These are all the words that we use to categorize the big umbrella of sin, but in the purest essence of it, he failed. So now we have to ask ourselves a question. Yeah, I might not be an adulterer, but where did I fall? Might not be a fornicator, but where did I fall? Because I think sometimes when we talk about sin, we want to talk about sin in what we see. But sometimes you got to talk about sin as what God sees. Who knows the heart? The heart is the sin. It, it says it is deceitful above all things, but God knoweth the heart and knoweth the soul. You can have righteous actions and man eyes and a deceitful heart in God's eyes. In which one are you fooling? So I think when we talk about sin, hear me now, stop, stop just talking about what you have seen people do or what you or what people see you do. Um, no, sin is much bigger than that. Um, how have I failed God? This might not be popular because we're talking about sin today, but how have I erred against God? How have I missed the mark God has called me to be? You know, I was talking to somebody, they said, oh, disobedience is not is, is, is not a sin. Excuse me. If disobedient caused me to fall short, then I have sinned. I have fallen short 
of what God would have me to do. And here it is now, and this, and this is what we got to understand. We're so busy trying to make sure that we cross every I, I mean, cross every T, dot every I. We're trying to make sure that our name is in the, is in, is, is on the church roll and trying to make sure that people see us as a good missionary and a, and a good deaconess and a good, all, and, I, and all that stuff is, is wonderful. But, un, but, but, but understand this right here. We can be good people who act wonderful, but our hearts are far from God. Y'all with me? So when we so when we're so when we're talking about sin, it's not what is just seen, but what's the condition of the heart? Even David talks about it. He says, "Creating me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew the right spirit within me." Because David knew, "I've fallen short." Adam fell short, sinned against God. We fall short, sinned against God. For we all sin and what? And fall short of the glory of God. Isn't that Romans 3 and 23? Yeah, so at the end of the day, it's more than what you did or didn't do by your actions. Sin is more than that. And so when we talk about repentance, we have to know where have I failed? Not the church, but God. Not the pastor, but God. And now, and, 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 and now while I'm on this, I think so many times we are trying to dot every I and cross every T that we forget what God has commanded us to do. First of all, love your God and your neighbor as yourself. So you can be a wonderful shouter, but if you don't love your neighbor, you're in sin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Talk, Davis. You can know every scripture in the world, but if you can't love your neighbor as yourself, We've we're, we're we failed there. All right. And so and so I, I want us to get it. I want us to get a real deep, a deep, good sense of this, that doing just what's embedded in us to do. Go to church, go to that alleviates me that. No, 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 no. Sin. Sin can be present. But we can be so worried about trying to check boxes, not really that the sin that I'm actually committing is the failure to really get closer to God, which causes me not to sin. Because the closer I'm getting to God and, and the more the Holy Spirit is inside of me, it will direct my steps for the steps of a good man and woman are ordered by God. A righteous man and woman are ordered by God. So at the end of the day, the more I get in God, the less I sin. The more I get in God, the more he's directing me, the less I, the more I get in God, the more he is telling me what to do and not what to do and will prick my heart to be obedient to God's word and to God's will. Yeah, you, 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 you might not have touched this, but if you fail to do this, God, I've erred, I've sinned. Yeah, you might not be doing this around town, but God, if I'm not obedient, I've erred, I've failed, I've sinned. Don't think so holy and mighty because your dress is longer now and, and, and you got good words and diction and you know that, that you don't sin. That's not the truth. Sin is when we failure, when we fail God. There's times even as a pastor, I have to, I have to repent because I failed God in something. Or God, I didn't do this as you would require me to do. God, I failed. I've sinned against your will that you called me to do. Everybody kind of get where we at now. I'm gonna make sure we kind of get a we we get it we get a gist of this, because this is the key to repentance. If there's no evil, then there's no need to repent. If there's no failure, there's no need to repent. If there's no if there's no falling short, there's no need to repent. But repentance is present for a reason. All right, I want to go around the Mulberry bitch. We got five more minutes. I'm gonna let y'all go. Okay. Here, here it is. Here, here it is. Uh, but I, I, but I want you to look at this. Um, I want you to look at. I want you to look at the evidence of Nineveh's repentance, right? Because because they do give some evidence. It, it's right here. They 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 do a few things of re repentance. The first thing they do, I want you to catch this right here, is they are receptive to God's word. I want, you, I want you to understand this. They are receptive to God's words. They just didn't hear Jonah shout and say, that's it. They are recepting, receptive of God's word. And this is how you know they are receptive because they acknowledge 
and then they acknowledge with actions. Okay, okay. Now, I want you to talk about repentance here for a moment. Um, it is first, they accept the message of God through the prophet Jonah. They accept this, right? So here it is. I want y'all to catch this. If we're really going to repent, we have to know. Um, we we have to know that God is speaking to us, and He's just not speaking a word of wrath, but He's also speaking a word of correction. He's speaking a word of of of, of correction. And let me just pause parenthetically and say this right here: If we are in the house of God and cannot take correction, you need to check your soul salvation. If we're in the house of God, we have to check our soul salvation when we are quick to argue rather than quick to sit back and say, God, what would you have for me to do? God, what is the word that you're pricking against my heart? When God is pricking, when God is touching your heart and when God is sending you a message and when God is trying to correct our behavior, we have to understand what God is calling us to. God is not trying to be determined for this city for just nothing. There's something there God needs and God wants. Isn't that just like with us? The messages have come, things have come your way. Uh, uh, things have come to prick your heart to say, no, this is the way it ought to be. That is a message that we ought to hear to turn and then to repent. Begin the process of repenting. See, I think sometimes we want microwave repentance. Oh, God, I shouldn't have did that. Please forgive me, but here it is. But sometimes you have to sit with the wrong that we've done. We have to sit with the failure that we've committed. We have to, we have to sit with the error. And these people, now listen, it does not tell us, it does not tell us how long they sat there, but this is what they said, 40 days. In 40 days, the wrath was coming, all right? So I don't know if this happened one day or 40 days, but this is what I do know. They heard the message of God. I need somebody to type that in there. They heard the message. They received the message, all right? They signed for the package. They, they, they signed their name for it and they received it. All right, here's the second thing they did. Uh, not only did the people, in, uh, not, not only did the king receive it, but then the king put out a decree and he says, nobody shall eat nothing. They fasted. They fast. They turned down their plate. They emptied themselves out. Fasting. Remember what Jesus teaches us. Some things don't come out, but by prayer and fasting. But in here, fasting is, fasting is, um, a, a way that they, uh, thank y'all for putting that in there. Fasting is now a way that they are showing God that we are emptying ourselves, sacrificing our pleasure so that we can get God's attention. They hear the message and they respond with action. They begin to fast. And listen, and, they, and, and they're so, and they're so in awe of God. They say, listen, matter of fact, your cattle's not eating nothing. Your flocks, chickens, nobody is eating anything. They fast and he puts a consecrated fast out just not for people, but for everything that have breath. <laughs> he says, y'all don't don't eat nothing. The king serious. The king is serious. He said nobody eats anything. So here it is. They heard it. But not only did they hear it, then they put it in actions. They fasted. Here's the other thing they did. All right. Here, here, here's the other thing they did. They covered themselves. They covered themselves, just not with anything. They covered themselves uh, in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, we talked about this Sunday. You understand the ritualistic part about this. Uh, he takes off his robe, sign of royalty, puts on sackcloth, a sign of humiliation. Sackcloth is old goat hair, dead goat hair, right? That's what he puts on himself. And so one day he's sitting on the throne in a robe. The next day he's in ashes with dead goat hair on him, old goat hair on his body. He's sitting with what he has done. They're sitting with what they have done. And that's what, and that's a part of repentance. Sometimes you got to sit with it. Sometimes you got to sit with the consequence. Sometimes you got to sit with the crying. Sometimes you got, I know weeping man do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I get all of that. But sometimes your morning, it doesn't happen in 24 hours. Sometimes your morning just doesn't happen in three or four days. Sometimes you have to sit with it. Sit with God. David did it when uh, when he was with Bathsheba and he met uh, and he and he and he touched Bathsheba. But then he has this child and he does all this evil stuff to cover it up. But then but then when the baby dies, he's he's remorseful. He sits in sackcloth and ashes, humiliates himself, gets down 
to God so he can talk. Then here it is. Not only did they fast, not only did they cover themselves, then they prayed to God. Not just to listen, not to no little gods, not to no, no, um, no, uh, no little gods running around here, nothing like that. Mm -mm, no, no, no. They said, listen, not only going to fast, not only going to cover yourself in sackcloth and ashes, but y'all going to pray to God. It already said they believe God. They already said that they believe in God. Let me just stop right here. It's amazing sometimes that we can believe the God we serve, but still error, still fall short of the mark. But they prayed to God. And then the last part of that says, then they turned from their ways. Are y'all catching what, what, what's, what's going on here? They received the message. They fasted covered themselves, many of they sat in sackcloth and ashes, many they sat in a state of humility, uh, a state of lowering themselves. Th this is a visible sign that God, I'm remorseful. Because sometimes we can know something is wrong, but not remorseful about it because it because you really wanted to do it. You, you really wanted to give that person a piece of your mind. You didn't love your neighbor, but God, I'm remorseful. But God, I'm sorry I did it. But are you remorseful? Are you sitting with it? Right. Then they prayed to God, turn and then uh, turn from the ways. All right. And listen, and then for me and uh, and this is just really, really what I, I really want to get to everybody. Just really talk to you today about this uh, last part. And then and then and then I'll let you go. All right. Well, um, there is a result to repentance. See, this would be a good close. If I was preaching. I see Sister Marks on here. I ain't going to say nothing. Sister Marks, how you doing? God bless you. Uh, listen. Um, there is a result to repentance. I'm close my Bible up like a good preacher so I can get about it. There is a result to repentance. Something can happen when we begin to repent. And I ain't gonna preach it to you. I'm just going to. I'm, we, we're just gonna go to the Word of God. All right, here it is. Here it is. Here's the Word of God. This is what it says. And I'm not even gonna deal with the people of Nineveh because there's two repentance here that happens. Even Jonah really begins to give the etch in stone of what repentance is, because while he's in the belly of hell, he's talking and testifying about how good God is. He he, he said, here, listen, D David, I, I got I got to go here. I got to go here. I wasn't going to keep y'all really long, but I just got to go here. I, I talked about if you go to. Um, Psalms 51. Let's see. Psalms 51. We'll go here. We're going to go to Psalms. Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 51 says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Y'all hear it? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. David is talking about this, his failure. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against you and only you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. But behold, you delight in truth and in the inward being and you teach me wisdom. This is what he's saying. This, this is the powerful text right here. He says, purge me with hyssop. See, Bob's a good church right there. We start shouting right there, right? Then I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall wither. Then uh, I shall be whiter than snow. Let hear the joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out my iniquities. David talks the language of somebody who's repentant. He talks the language of someone who is repenting. He keeps acknowledging his transgressions. And notice how he's labeling sin. My transgressions, my wrong against you and only you have I sinned. All right. And so they, they and I want to make sure I read that the all day because that, that really stood out to me. But here it is. And I'm going to let you go. I promise you this right here. There's some results of being a repentant believer of God. Here's the first result. It's right here. In chapter 3, it's right here in chapter 3, verse 1. Here it is, second chance. Again, this here it is, here it is. It's, it's, it's right there in the first verse of Jonah, chapter 3. And God spoke to Jonah a second chance. So when you are repentant, here it is, 
second chances are coming your way. I need I need somebody to drop that in your spirit right there. Listen, this, this second chances are coming. Jonah was disobedient, Mr. Mark. Jonah was disobedient, ran the other way. Jonah still got a second chance. Because why it says this? Because it's just not the fish experience, but the experience is this right here. And God spoke to him a second chance. Every preacher, every prophet, bishop, anybody ought, ought to thank God that even when God calls us to be his spokesperson, when we error, he gives us a second chance. And guess what? And that's everybody who is a, a born again believer of Christ. We operate in God giving us second chances. He spoke to him a second chance. So when repentance happens, second chances are offered. Another chance is offered. Second chance. I, I need I need to make sure somebody get that in your spirit. Second chance. You know, um, yeah, God, yeah, God, God can be wrathful. God can be, but God gives second chances. Right there, Jonah chapter three, verse one. Then the word said to the Lord, to Jonah, the second time, arise. Arise. So I don't know about you. That That's enough to get happy about, that God gives somebody like me second chance. I right, here's the other evidence. It's right here. It's right here. It's right here in Jonah chapter three. You just got to go to verse 10. When God saw what they did, when God saw what they did, say that one more time. When God saw what they did, yes, repentance requires you to do something. It's more than just saying, I'm sorry. It's more than just saying, I ain't mean to. Oops, my bad. Forgive me. No, it's more than that. They put some actions behind this right here. When he saw what they did, how they turn remember we talked about what repentance is it's a turning away and a turning towards when they turned from their evil ways god relented of disaster that he had said he would do to them and he did not do it that's the evidence of repentance what should have came your way not coming That's another sign of repentance, that God will change his mind and what might have killed you might be the very thing that will preserve you and usher you into a better relationship with God. But we have to get serious about what this thing repentance is. And knowing that we err against God's will. And it's more than just actions, it's words, it's deeds, it's, it's things within your heart translate your spirit, your soul. So, you know, if we paid in full, we got to act like, you know, if we love the Lord, you got to love the Lord, your God and your neighbor. And that's why we got to be very careful. Uh, but my, I thank you, Sister Andrew. I think you put in the side here for me. So this is a message for the church and everything else. Well, since we own it, let's go and hit it. That's why we have to understand that in the church, we're failing sometimes, which means we are we we are sinning. We are falling short of the mark, not just with not just with God alone. But with each other, when we're bickering and arguing and fussing and tearing us and tearing each other down and gossiping, we are falling short. When we're not witnessing, but we're witness to your face, but then tear you down behind your back, we are falling short. I need I need I need somebody to hear me with this. When we are not working in ministry, when we are not trying to do this because sister so and so or brother so and so and only, and I can't get along with them. I didn't hurt it all. We are sinning we are falling short of the glory of god okay i'm gonna leave that alone I'm gonna leave that alone we have to understand something that sin and falling short and failure is when we've sinned against god sinned against his ways and so how do we correct that we repent we 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 repent we acknowledge the message of god we fast we cover ourselves. Uh, we, we we sit back and we are asking God for forgiveness. We pray to God. This is what we do. Now, this is old, it is an Old Testament practice of sitting in sackcloth and ashes. I'm done, you know, but we do. But that's simply a sign of humbling ourselves to sit with God and sit with what we've done. I wonder what, what it would be like if the church repented of our failures, not just to God but with one another. I wonder what the church would be like. I wonder the many people that would then say, I see the presence of God there. 
I see the presence of God in that place. I see God really moving and operating. We want God to move in our church. We have to be able to be moved by God. And that starts with true repentance, being heartfully sorry and, for, and remorseful for what we've done. Here it is. I'm going to put it to you. Um, um, Pentecost is coming up. And as we are headed towards Pentecost, I want us as a church to practice repentance, um, not only just to God, but to the ministry that God has called us to, to what God has called us to as a church called Martin Temple here on the corner right here in, 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 in Chicago off, off South Cottage Grove Avenue. God has called us to do some things and we've been like Jonah, we've ran the other way, but can we repent and God to give us another chance? We've sinned against people. We've transgressed against people. We've talked people down. We've ran people away. Can we sit with that repentance and deal with that? And I believe God will hear our heart. He will see what we've done. And he can say that's fertile ground that I can sow seed into. All right, listen, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right, I'm finished, and I hope everybody's all right. I hope the teaching was okay for you today. Um, you know, I try better next time, uh, but I definitely want us to know that this is vitally important, uh, and that um, this is definitely what God is calling us to do. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna talk. We, we we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Listen, if you have some prayer requests, please put them in. Uh, I definitely want to pray for Sister Tommy and her sister as they will be traveling, I believe, back from Mississippi. I want to make sure that we pray for them. Um, and uh, if there's any sick among us, I want us to make sure we pray for Sister Tina Martin as well, who lost her sister, um, a very loved sister, beloved sister that she had. Um, her sister passed. So I want to make sure that we that we talk to, uh, uh, that we pray for her. Uh, if there's any other prayers, um, I want to make sure that we put that out there. I want to say it was wonderful Mother's Day. It was good to see uh, all the mothers in the building and, uh, and, and some mothers that haven't been here in a while. And and uh, saw Brother John Knox and, and a few others. And so it was just really good, uh, a really good day. I hope you all loved on your mothers and, and things for like that. We're going to pray for Sister Davis as well. Tracy Davis, we're going to pray for her as well. Um, is there any other prayer requests? If you just put it on the line and we'll do it. I know there'll be some that might watch just a little later. And uh, and we want to make sure that we do it for you. Thank God praying for Dr. Um, um, Stokes as well. Um, but God is a healer. Ain't that right, Dr. Stokes? I know he is. Um, and so, uh, and, and listen, we're going to continue to keep Reverend Munden lifted up. God has really blessed her. Amen. In a short amount of time, I'm so, uh, I, listen, God, I have some prayers. That, that's all I know. Okay. All right. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to repent. God, thank you, Lord, for seeing us before uh, we even were conceived and born to know that, God, we would fall short and that we would sin, Lord. But you have um, an avenue back to you through the believing of your son, that his blood, his precious blood, God, was paid out. He was the atonement for our sins, God. And now we have access to you and to your throne. And so, God, we come to you now saying, God, we're heartfully sorry for the things that we haven't done and the things that we have done that might not have been pleasing in your sight. Now, God, individually and collectively, God, allow us to sit with some things and some things that we need to repent from. Lord, whether it's we've idled some things, Lord, whether we have um, um, allowed things to creep in our spirit that has uh, dampened our relationship with you. God, whatever it is, allow a message of correction to come to us right now. But God, allow us to put action behind that. Pray and seek your face, Lord, to sit with it and be remorseful, God, to pray unto you. Lord, and not only that, God, and to turn from it and return back to you. So, God, we bless you. Lord, if there's any sick among us, would you heal? Thank you for your sustaining healing power, God, and what you've already given to us. Now, bless this Martin Temple Church and all those who are gathered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, listen, I love you with the love of Jesus Christ, and uh, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Um, Please know that the cleaning of the church is on the way. We will be back cleaning next. Uh, I mean, uh, tomorrow we'll be back cleaning tomorrow as well. So if you want to come on in, you can drop on by the church and, and help us out um, to get some things. Pat, that's why I'm in a T-shirt today. I had you can ask them. I had my had my, my shoes on and I'm around the church carrying stuff, taking it where it needs to go, because that's just what you do. Um, I don't believe a, a servant leaves from behind, leaves from the front. Right. So. 
Uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll be here. Um, and so if you can come starting at nine o'clock, church will be here. We'll be open. We'll be getting stuff together. We'll be cleaning down the church. Really need help in the kitchen area as we're boxing up some stuff so that we can uh, give some things away to an, uh, um, to a needy organization that can help uh, in the midst of burnout. Thank you, Sister Sue Watts and others for that uh, suggestion. Uh, and so that's what we're doing. And uh, and I'm excited about it. I really am. And we're finding stuff that we ain't we ain't know we had. <laughs> Uh, and so that's good. Listen, I love you all. Take care of yourself. Love on somebody this week with the love of Jesus Christ. And remember, repentance is just not for the sinful who have not known God, but repentance are for those who know God and claim God as their savior. We still sometimes must be in a repentant state. All right. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you real soon right here. Now, Zion. I'm sorry. At Martin Temple. Lord, I didn't pass so many churches. I keep saying Mount Zion and Grace and everything else. We'll see you real soon right here at Martin Temple. Take care.